Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. Wow. Father, I just thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day, morning, evening, whenever it is that people are listening to this message. Father, I thank you that you're on the inside of each and one, each one that has received your son Jesus as Savior. We are your sons, your daughters in the earth, and I thank you for this wonderful walk that we have with you, this wonderful fellowship and relationship that we have with you. And Father, I pray right now through your Holy Spirit on the inside of me, speak through me directly into the hearts of each and every person that listens to this message today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can open your Bible to Romans, the fourth chapter we're teaching right now on the faith life and we've covered a lot a lot of things in this series of teaching and if you haven't heard the previous messages they're all available for you they're available on the youtube website or you can go on our regular website and they're available on mp3 format and eventually we'll put all of them in a way that you can download them on mp3 in romans the fourth chapter and i want to begin reading in verse 13 this is a new testament writing about an old testament example of faith faith does the same faith causes God to come on the scene it causes the promises of God to become a reality in your life the only difference between the Old and New Testament issue of faith is in the Old Testament faith came from the outside into their soul God did things in realms of the natural or the sense knowledge realm that regularly reminded man what to believe in the new testament we have god's faith in us it's one of the fruits of the spirit it's on the inside of us we've been given the measure of faith the bible teaches us and as we hear god's word and put god's word to practice in our life this faith is developed and it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger stronger meaning less doubt in your soul and more faith in your soul in your spirit faith is never a problem you have no spiritual problems in your human spirit you are complete in Christ and so as you hear God's Word God's Word comes into you and it activates his nature of faith that he put on the inside of you to where you start thinking different you start seeing things different you see things the way God sees things you think the way God thinks you make decisions in line with the way God would make those decisions and that's the walk of faith you speak forth God's Word and it manifests you act like it's so and it manifests all the promises of God come to pass in your life in Romans 4 and verse 13, it says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. God gave a promise to Abraham that he would be the heir of the world. Now, what was he talking about? He's going to get back what God had created for man. It says, Or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith righteousness the righteousness of God comes by faith we are the righteousness of God in Christ for if they which are of the law be heirs faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath that was the whole purpose of the law God gave the law to show man that he was a sinner, show man that there was no way that he could save himself. He had to trust in someone and some action beyond his own action, some person beyond himself to be saved. Well, who is that? Who lived the perfect life? Who came and worked and did not sin one 
time, who was the perfect man. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe in him. We believe that he has done the work for us. He died on the cross. He took our sin. He went to hell. He resurrected. This is what we believe. And that's how we become righteous, through belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, verse 14, the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression, verse 16, therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. Grace means that you didn't deserve it, but you got it. <laughs> you didn't deserve it. I mean, if you think about it, Jesus got something he didn't deserve. Jesus didn't deserve my sin. Jesus didn't deserve your sin. He didn't deserve the way that you and I uh, lived. He didn't deserve the penalty for the wrongdoing of mankind. Jesus was perfect. He lived a perfect life. He walked in perfect fellowship with God as his father. But you know what? Because God loved you and I so much, he allowed his son to come to the earth. And because Jesus loved us so much, he allowed himself or he emptied himself of his perfect life. He said, I have the power to lay my life down and I have the power to take it up again. Jesus laid down his life and he took our imperfections. He got something that he didn't deserve so that we could get something that we don't deserve. And that's forgiveness and God's righteousness. We got in on the greater part of the deal. I'm so glad for what Jesus has done for me. I believe you can say the same. It says, therefore, it is not, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed and not to that only, which is of the law referring to the Jews, but to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham. Now look at this, who is the father of us all. Paul is writing here, and he's writing to, to non-Jewish people. And he says, you know, he's not only the father of Jew, the Jews, but he's the father of all these other nations. And God promised Abraham in the Old Testament, he said, through you, all of the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Well, how would that take place? It wasn't going to happen because of your national nationality, your, your physical birth. But it would happen because of faith. And it's, that's the way it is. No one is saved outside of faith. No one receives this eternal inheritance outside of faith. Abraham is the father of faith. Now, verse 17. Now we're going to learn some things. Some revelation on how to stand. Right here. This is how you stand. If you're facing a situation in your life. Maybe the doctors have told you you're going to die. There's no chance that you can live. Maybe you got a financial situation. I shared with you about a family that was deep, deep, deep in debt. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a very large amount of money. And uh, these are some people that are, that are hooked up with, with our ministry and so thankful for what God has done in their life and God has done with them and they were deep deep but you know what they started sowing their seed and believe in God and that mountain has been removed God has done that in their life and that is such it's such a great testimony but uh, you know maybe you're facing uh, that type of situation or maybe there's some love person in your life and you're saying oh God they're not born again and and they they need to know you and and it's someone in your family well the word of God says that we can stand for our family you know my dad praise God it took him 30 years and finally in 30 years I knew for sure that he made a decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. He's in heaven today, but I'm so thankful that I was able to be there and all that time of waiting, waiting, and believing, believing, and God moving, and God sending labors into his life, and God sending signs and wonders in his life, and all these different things, and finally he made a decision. Well, uh, uh, you know, maybe you're dealing with an issue of depression, and you just haven't seen the, the end of the tunnel. And uh, I, you know, I, and yeah, I know Christians depressed, 
year after year after year. It's because of what's going on the in, inside of their soul. But I'm going to tell you something. The, these things may be big mountains to you in your senses. But here's the number one point to activating God's faith. Look at this in verse 17. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. We have a situation here with Abraham. And in the Old Testament, Abraham's name was Abram. He, uh, the Lord God appeared to him and told him, Abram, that he was going to be the father of many nations. Now, at that time, he had not had any children. He didn't have a son that he could pass any inheritance on through or to. And his wife was barren. Sarai was her name. We know her as Sarah. But her name first was Sarai. And Abraham's name first was Abram. And the Lord God appeared to him and says, you're going to be the father of many nations. He's about 75 years old at that time. And from the natural standpoint, there's no way that he and Sarai can come together and give birth, have sex, come together, conceive and give birth to a child. They cannot do this. It is physically, naturally beyond sense, knowledge, impossible. And so what what do we have here? We have an impossible situation. But verse 17 says, as it is written. And here's the point. As it is written, and, and we have this term different places in the word. It's putting the emphasis on the word of God. Remember, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, what happened? The devil came and tempted Jesus in the wilderness. And Jesus said, it is written. Even Jesus knew what the Word of God said. And even Jesus could use the Word of God to go against the temptation or the attack of the devil in his life. Well, we have this situation here where Abraham is, is facing the symptoms of his body. When he looks at his body and looks at Sarah, it doesn't look like it's possible. When he uh, relies on the information that is is given to him through his ears and what other people are saying you know Abraham you're an old man and and all these types of things then then you you have that situation that he's facing things are not you know his body's not working the way that it worked when he was a younger man and to be able to have children Sarah you know they've they've not been able to have children up until this time so they have many years working against them of doubt to produce unbelief but it says as it is written so somewhere this promise got written down in a way that Abraham could see it this is what God said and this is the way it is with you and I we need to go to the Word of God I and and find scriptures that show us who we are and show us what God has promised God has promised you are healed doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the symptoms say in your body. Doesn't matter the condition that you're in at this time in, in your physical body. All these different things are, are going against you. But God's word says you are healed. It is written by his stripes you were healed. God's word says he'll supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Doesn't matter what nation you live in. You know, this, the, the message of prosperity will work in Africa. It'll work in the Philippines. I just saw it work in a tremendous, tremendous way in the Philippines. And I've already shared the testimony with you. And from the natural, when you go there, you look, wow, how is this thing ever going to change? You got all these different things going against, got, you know, uh, things that, that, um, People are, are, are taking advantage of the situation, keeping other people poor so that they can become rich and, and all these different things working against. But praise God, God worked in that situation. God says that the things that we put our hand to will prosper. God says that as we sow our seed, he will multiply that seed and he will increase that seed. 
and, and on and on. You know, God says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so the joy of God is there to knock the depression out of your life. So what do you do? If, if you're struggling with depression, you go into the word of God and you find out what does the word of God have to say about God's joy? The word of God says to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The word of God says the joy of the Lord is my strength. The word of God calls heaven the joy of the Lord. The word of God says in God's presence, there's fullness of joy, you know, and, and you see it and you say, okay, praise God. I can sing and I can praise and I can thank the Lord. And as I sing and praise and give thanks unto God, you have a breakthrough and the joy comes and you do that long enough that that thing of depression that's been on you it's going to break it's going to leave you change your thinking you don't think the old way you start thinking God's way and I promise you God is not depressed and I promise you his word is not full of depressing thoughts his word is full of thoughts that that are going to give you good things to think about build you up support you and take you forward and that's how you knock that stuff out so so you go to the word of God you find there are many many scriptures in God's word about healing you find it you find and and the word is quickened in you it comes alive in you and that's what you stand on Abraham had on it is written you find where it's written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So somewhere Abraham got a hold of the revelation that God quickens bodies that, that have gone dead in certain areas. God quickens. And that's what he was standing on. My body's alive. My body's quickened. This will come to pass. God has said it. And God's word is forever, ever true. Well, I see that that's all the time we have for our message today. Listen again next week as we continue on with this series on the faith life. It's been great to be with you. We've had some great things that we've covered. And this is Friday. And you know, I just ask you to really consider becoming a partner with us. I'm believing for a thousand people that will hook up with us. we got a lot of invitations to many different nations all over the world. And uh, it takes money to do that. And, you know, I'm not begging. I never beg for money. God is my source, and he always has a way to, to provide for us. But if you, want, if you want to help us and you want, want to bless this ministry, you can do that. Just go on our website, and uh, there's information on our website about partnership. And through your partnership, you will help us to go to nations all over the world. You'll help us with our new church here in Germany and what he's doing in this nation. And then you'll help us in other places. And uh, you'll be a part of our from faith to faith to the nation's family that is helping us to go to the world to bring in the harvest and establish new believers in the word of God. So anyway, go on our website. It's very simple. www.punktffn punct or period o r g. That's www period f f f n that's three f's n and then period o r g and the website will greatly bless you we are doing some work on it there's going to be some changes coming in the future where we can simplify it a little bit more we have a bible school on there that's free and we have some things that we're going to do uh, with changes on that it's in five different languages right now and all the things we do these things are free god said use the internet to go to the nations and that's what we're doing and we make all of these things available free but these things it costs money to do it and that's what our partners are doing is they're helping us to get the equipment to pay for the plane tickets you know to to uh, take care of the preacher praise god and 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 to do all the things that god wants us to do and so pray for us believe with us and we go forward and i look forward to seeing you or, or ministering to you next week as we continue on with this series on the faith life. This is Mark Urban.